Hey, Stacy Pickering. Hi, I'm Inata, and thank you for having me. <laughs> I am so excited to have you here. Um, first of all, I want everyone to know that um, we listened to an excerpt from one of your sound bath meditations on Spotify, and everyone in our community was really appreciative. Um, it's amazing how it just goes right to your cells, you know? The longer you let yourself be in the soup of sound, how it just really vibrates your cells. So thank you for putting your work out there in the world. My pleasure. Thank you for listening. <laughs> you know, I like to begin every interview by asking what's good. So mm -hmm. tell me what's good to you today in this moment. <sighs> In this moment, I am sitting in front of a window in a space that is new to me. I just recently moved and there is a beautiful green space outside backyard, which I did not have before I was living in a very urban area and I'm just a little bit uh, west of there, but it's much greener and I have trees um in my view and i get to wake up in the morning and greet them and do my practice here and sing here and and i'm sitting here right now with those trees um, in my view mm -hmm. so that feels really it's been really healing for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where are you based stacy Cleveland, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, because I, I thought I've seen that based on your post on Instagram. And just so everyone knows, I met you via Instagram. I actually went to one of your mm -hmm. sound bath healings that you do online once a month. And, mm -hmm. um, and I was transported and that was like an hour long experience of sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was so um, it just felt like giving myself something really luxurious, you know, to to stop everything and put on headphones and give yourself an hour of sound that is intended to heal you. Um, I, I so I, I don't know what 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 you would say to that, except maybe you want to tell us a little bit about how you got there, how you got to be taking people on these sound journeys. <sighs> So how I got there, <laughs> um, well, I was, was in a yoga teacher training, which is what brought me back to Cleveland after living in lots of other places for about uh, 11 and a half, 12 years. And uh, I met a teacher here who I really wanted to study with. I was just back visiting my family, but um, this teacher was speaking to exactly what I had been asking spirit to bring into my life. And even though I didn't think I wanted to move back to Cleveland, um, this is where, <laughs> this is where what I was asking for was being offered. So, um, I came back for three months and that was nine years ago. <laughs> And here I am still. Um, and during that time, I uh, had sound, vibrational sound, sound intended for healing just coming into my life. I um, rented a house with one of the people I met in my training who was studying music therapy. And she brought a couple of singing bowls into our home. And um, sometimes I would feel like a shift happening in me before I knew what was happening. And I'd be like, it's those bowls. <laughs> it's those bowls. <laughs> um, and you you mean before time, the bowls were even playing, you felt something happening? Or before when you heard the I knew that's what it was. It was like she would be playing the bowls in the house and I wouldn't have identified like that they were playing, I would feel something shifting and then be like, it's, oh, it's those bowls playing, she's playing them. And um, at the same time, there was someone in 
Cleveland who was offering um, sound bath meditations for groups with multiple instruments, singing bowls. I think maybe it was just singing bowls. And I went and I really experienced, um, yeah, the sound at a cellular, cellular level as you described. Um, I had a whole basically psychedelic visual journey just um, from the sound where I could really see um, imbalances in me and um, yeah, I could see imbalances in me like unraveling and I saw them as like color and patterns that were associated with the sounds and it just created such an unwinding of what was wound up in me and such a softening and an opening and I could really see like new patterns opening um, and pathways opening for what was next. You, you mean know? like new patterns in your energy? Patterns. Or new patterns? Yeah, patterns in my energy, patterns within me, um, and just like opening like pathways um, from the unwinding of what maybe was being held that was like manifesting as imbalances for me. Um, the old things unraveling and space being created for new. Is there, is there, could you give us an example of something that you felt unraveling that the sound helped to unravel for you? I know it was a while mm. ago. Yeah. Um, so at the time in the yoga teacher training, we were dealing with the first thing that we did, it was a pretty non-traditional yoga teacher training. And the first thing that we did was to go right into our relationship with our parents and to forgive them. If we felt like we were holding things that needed to be forgiven or um, just, you know, right into those <laughs> kind of uh, core issues that most of us carry. And it was really hard for me. It was really hard for me. I was, I had a lot of resistance and when I went to the sound bath, it was like the sounds just went right into that resistance and where I was holding it in my heart. And I could just feel that like tightness, that kind of armor around my heart, like unwinding and just like the sound coming in. Um, some space being created, you know, um, a mm. softening of that armor. <laughs> One of the things I like about what you're saying, well, let me just say it this way, that resonates as true about what you're saying is um, sometimes the breaking down the armor or forgiveness um, or the resistance that we're feeling inside of us is really best handled by not going through the mind, but first going through the body. How do you, what do you think about that? I absolutely agree with you. My mind felt um, just stuck in resistance and it didn't, I didn't see a way to logically make my way through but to the other side of it or in, even into it. Um, and, but the, but yeah, the sound, the vibrational, um, the vibrational resonance just reached right in there, just transcended the part of my logical mind that could keep talking me out of, you know, just talking me out of letting go or, you know, was, uh, went right past that loud mind, that resistant mind. And, and I find that that's true with movement practice as well. Any kind of somatic experience of like moving through physically, whatever is going on, um, has just been profound, sometimes in combination with like, talk therapy, or, you know, going there with the mind, but the body as well. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you had your first sound bath experience. You're doing yoga teacher training, and fast forward, are you a yoga teacher tra- teacher now and a sound bath person? Or are you really a sound person? I'm a sound person. I am not a yoga teacher, um, and I didn't necessarily go into that training with the intention of being a yoga teacher, mm-hmm. um, which might sound strange, but I but I think that might be true for pe- you know for people. It was true I've for heard. me from it others was, yeah you know it's like for about me. deepening yeah it's about deepening your own practice or just you know a lot of times um you know healing whatever needs to be healed in you or just growth so i did teach yoga for a while but it never quite resonated with me and actually it was that logical part of the mind that felt like it needed to be engaged for me in yoga teaching that just never quite felt fluid for me and that's why sound did because it felt intuitive vibrational I I felt an ease with it Mm. right from the start Mm. wow so it it was intuitive vibrational you felt at ease with it from the start yeah Mm -hmm. wow I, I, Mm -hmm. I repeated those words out loud because I think that sometimes we think we have to do the thing we were trained in, or we have to use the mm-hmm. modality that our teacher, whom we very much respect, uses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but a friend of mine, Jen Fry, she said, well, just because it's really good for your teacher doesn't mean if it doesn't come easy or intuitive for you, then it may not be your modality. And mm-hmm. so I love that. Um, sometimes we don't have to work it hard. <laughs> Yes, uh, preach. <laughs> Sometimes we just need to work it easy and see what's the easy path here, you know? Yes. Hmm. Yes, please. I keep learning that. <laughs> we, you, we, we did have some communication about that, like, because obviously as a sound bath healer, and this is your work in the world, right? And this is the way that you sustain yourself financially. I wish. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Um, tell me about that. Well, I could say um, both I wish and also yes to some degree. Right, right. Yes to some degree. Um, So I do regularly offer sound baths to groups online and in person and people do pay money for that and um you know it varies like how much it supports me financially um and i i also do work with people one-on-one with different energy modalities including sound and that also somewhat sustains me financially and also not entirely and i do work other jobs as well Mm so um and i am currently intending to get a degree in music therapy because it's basically like a societally validated way (laughs) to be offering sound to be able to sing to people which is what i want to do the most and um to be able to have more financial stability doing that yeah so yeah so that is the next step (laughs) okay so what you so there's a few things we want to talk about i want to talk about this money issue (laughs) Because so right. many of us who are out here bringing our medicine to the world are uh, navigating how does it work to make it so that I bring this medicine and so that I am uh, reciprocated, you mm-hmm. know, to sustain life, mm-hmm. my life mm-hmm. at the level and at the pace that I want to. So um, so I do want to come back to that. But I have to start with love because what you said was <laughs> I want to <laughs> sing to people, which is what I love. So mm-hmm. tell me about what you think is the difference between singing to people and and doing this like sound bath sound bath vibrational healing, because um, I really want to hear 
someone else talk about the human voice? Well, for me, when I play sound baths for people, my voice always wants to be one of the instruments. So that that has been that has been true um, since the beginning with me playing these instruments, and that that was encouraged by a friend who invited me for the first time to play the bowls for one of her yoga classes. And um, she, she knows that I sing, she's heard me sing. And when I came to play the singing bowls for the first time ever for a group of people, she said right before I started, you should sing with the bowls. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, and that felt like it was asking for like some courage from me to share my voice. Uh, and I went for it and it felt really like the most aligned I've ever felt like sharing something with people. And people from the class, uh, you know, shared with me afterwards that they had like a really profound experience and they were really encouraging me to use my voice, that that really was part of it for them. And so I've always used my voice with the vibrational instruments. And I also like to sing melodic songs too, you know, um, chants, songs, that have words that I learn or that I make up. Um, I hear songs coming through when I'm in nature. Sometimes it's just sounds and sometimes there are words. Does that answer the question? Of course it's answered the okay. question. <laughs> so, um, so the reason why I ask is because um, I have gotten a, a pretty big nudging and knowing that my voice is a huge instrument for evolution for consciousness mm -hmm. expansion for evolution and i love to sing uh, i i'm very pitchy <laughs> i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i'm very pitchy <laughs> so that means that sometimes i get uptight about singing like my shoulders rise up because i don't want to like mess up but um, when I'm very relaxed mm -hmm. and just being in service to uh, the, the beauty that wants to come through or the sadness or the anger that mm -hmm. wants to come through, then I don't feel, I don't think about pitch and I just let the medicine come through mm -hmm. because it makes me feel good. And um, hopefully, uh, and additionally, it would be great if other people felt good too. And I wonder, because I've heard you sing and you are not pitchy. <laughs> I'll let everybody know you sound good when you sing. Um, Thank you. But there's something really vulnerable about, you know, letting your voice be heard and as opposed to letting a sound bowl be heard or a beautiful instrument. You know, my husband plays a violin and he's got beautiful sounds coming through his instrument. But when you just, when your voice is what's being heard and all the cracks and the crinkles and the morning and the night before, mm -hmm. I don't know, there's something really immediate about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it is vulnerable and that vulnerability itself is medicine for us, right? Like to go into it. Yeah. To, you know, and see what might be expressed right. from there. <laughs> right. Um, it's powerful. And I, it's, it feels really specific to this culture and probably others, but definitely to this culture, the one that I know, um, where it's so common for us to feel that 
we're not that there's some way to do it right or that we might not be doing it right and mm -hmm. most people i know have that fear of our own voices and um and it's so interesting because it's it's a medicine that most of us have access to that um and so i guess because it is it lives in us um that fear of it culturally then moving you know going into that fear and is the medicine too for yes. us you know <laughs> yes yes mm -hmm. yeah being able to being willing to walk into the danger or what yeah, could be trouble there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and maybe some people have like i had an experience as a little girl i used to sing a lot like mm -hmm. unabashedly sing right and I remember mm -hmm. singing in a hallway some song because it had nice echoes in an apartment building. And mm. this one person came out and she told me something like, you know, you don't sound as good as you think you do. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. I don't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. Who knows mm -hmm. what she meant, if she meant it mm -hmm. for harm or not. But wow, it was like a shock to my system. And all of a sudden I was like, felt like I had to cover up. I hear you. And I have heard other people express similar things that there's just this one experience as a child where someone said something about our voice and it just became this, this thing in us. It made that vulnerable part of us just want to hide. And so, um, yeah, it goes back deep for a lot of us to be able to go into it and learn to be with that part of us to let that somehow, you know, let that part of us feel safe enough to come out. But I, I also am really interested in helping people go into the voice, you know, and just with, um, I'm exploring something like, um, this idea of sounding it out, like, I'm just going to play one of these instruments that just makes a tone and and this is a practice i do myself which is like when i'm feeling big things when i'm feeling big emotions and i like need to move through it i move through it with my voice i'll play like the shruti box that droning instrument and just make the wildest sounds whatever needs to come out what is the sound of this feeling and just it's guttural and it's ugly and it's whatever and making all the sounds that need to come out until until whatever until it feels like something is resolved or has shifted and um it's such medicine to use our voice in that way and who knows, sometimes a song does come out or something that sounds harmonious, mm -hmm. but not always, but also, um, yeah, I'm really interested in encouraging people or sharing that practice with people more. It's kind of new coming through for me as a thing to share. Please help people, do. Like, <laughs> help guide people through like that process. Absolutely, please do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the problems with technology and things like CDs and Instagram and Spotify, places where we are and where as performing artists we need to be, is then it sort of makes it like it sets a bar so high that you're yeah. like, oh, instead of me singing you this song that I really like, let me find a recording of it and play, you know, somebody else singing it, which is okay. Um, but it's different than, than you finding the song, the melody inside of yourself and sharing that with someone. So that's one thing. And then when you said about just the guttural sounds and it just reminded me of, have you heard of Resma Menachem? He wrote the book, yes. My Grandmother's Hand. Yes. I'm at pause in that book because he asks us to pause, like when, you know, 
at the place where we're like, um, I'm not ready to fully go into that practice all the way. So yes, I do know that book and I am paused Mm -hmm. with it, but Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things that I like about it is he talks about how, um, he talks about his grandmother, of course, but he also talks about humming. Mm-hmm. Humming as a way to bring ourselves into regulation, to, to bring yes. ourselves back into emotional balance or energetic balance. And um, so why did I bring that up? Well, I feel like I just, with technology, sometimes we we don't give, ourselves we don't recognize the medicine we already have inside of us and Mm -hmm. i wonder if there's something different about me humming than about me hearing somebody singing something really well you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i I just wonder vibrationally Mm -hmm. is there a difference when i sing it imperfectly Mm -hmm. you know versus when you know i don't know Etta James or Ella Fitzgerald and you know these people with amazing styles and voices when they sing it what do you think so you're asking if there's a difference yeah when you hear something sung versus when you sing it even if you love it the way that somebody else right definitely yes um and I Though I don't teach yoga now, I did teach yoga and I, I taught yoga in Cleveland public schools for a while. And one of the nervous system regulation tools that I learned and, and um, worked with, with the kids was humming and especially to actually cover your ears while you're humming. And it really helps you to feel that resonance and vibration and it's it's actually scientifically proven to regulate the nervous system when you hum yourself to actually feel that vibration in your body and it stimulates the vagus nerve and so it definitely is healing in a different way um so could you um i'm going to ask you This is completely unexpected, but can you demonstrate that for us so that, you know, if people are listening to this, if they want to practice humming after this Um, or during this time? Sure. So first I would just encourage or invite everyone to take a breath in through the nose into the belly, maybe putting a hand on the belly and maybe a hand on the heart if that feels good or okay for you and to breathe in through the nose into the belly and then breathe out through the mouth just letting it have whatever sound it might want or need to have we'll take one more breath like that and then after that i'll say inhale to hum And when we hum, the invitation is to put your hands over your ears. And we'll do that. Let's do that three times. And maybe experiment with your hands on your ears, hands off the ears, hand on heart, wherever it feels right. So let's just take one more breath together first and through the nose, into the belly. Exhale, however it feels good or right. And then inhale to hum. And again, inhale to hum. And one more time, inhale to hum. comfortable for you and notice how you feel 
Well, I feel good. <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> so you used to use that in public school to help mm -hmm. the kids kind of regulate and settle themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. 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 Wow, that does stop an interview, doesn't it? Sure does. <laughs> I was like, well, well, it feels like we're complete. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> We're good. We're good. I mean, there is so much truth in that. We are good. Let's take a moment to have a break to hear from our sponsor. Okay. So we're back with Stacy Pickering, our sound healer, <laughs> vibrational therapy. Uh, you know, just beautiful soul over here. In, in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. So Stacy, um, some of the things that people might be wondering is like, how does humming and chanting relate? Like there's chanting in a lot of religious traditions, you know, if you've done yoga teacher training, then you've probably come across some of the, the Hindu chants, the chants related to the chakras. And mm -hmm. I, I was just wondering about that. Like, how much do you need to know to be effective? And mm -hmm if you chant versus you hum you know is there a difference to your body in your mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good question so yes as you mentioned in my yoga teacher training um we did learn specific chants uh specific sounds and tones um my teacher is from India and uh, and did teach us Sanskrit chanting um, and I've also participated in uh, Kirtan, which uses the Sanskrit language and is like a call and response um, chanting practice. And yes, I do notice specific um types of resonance in the body with certain chants with certain tones uh, and sounds and i sometimes do use those tones and sounds with when i'm doing my personal practice and when i'm sharing sounds songs tones with other people i don't tend to use Sanskrit um, or other languages that I don't feel like are mine to share. Um, I think that has shifted for me over time. Um, I think just from a place of wanting to feel comfortable with something I know or something that has been passed down, I would use those sounds that come from these ancient cultures or that have been passed down to me through whomever. Um, and at some point I have just naturally evolved out of using them into using what feels authentic to me. What are the sounds that are just coming through? And that's, that's really what feels like mine to share. <laughs> so, uh, and I do find, I explore like what different types of vowel and consonant sounds feel like in different parts of the body, but I never tell people this sound is for this part of the body because I really do feel like the medicine of sound um, often or in my experience goes where it needs to go for each of us. I love that. I, I just love mm -hmm. that because you know what, when you say that, even if you say that out loud, this sound is going to go wherever it needs to go for each of us. So it will be probably, mm -hmm. it may be different for each person in this room. It's like, you mm -hmm. just, it's like, it's just so much permissioning. And I feel like so much mm -hmm. of our education is like structuring us to get mm -hmm. the same result 
you know, mm-hmm. like we're so trained for the right answer, in other Absolutely. words. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. that thing about trusting your body, listening to your body, your body has intelligence. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what I hear you where I hear you coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you were when you were integrating your voice into, you know, your sound practices, some people might be wondering, like, how do you know when mm. to use your voice or when to really rely on the bowls or bells or you know, mm. rattles? I, 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 you mentioned, I think, a, a droning instrument you have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is a great question. And that is always evolving. And I feel like what's always being asked of me in that process is a deep listening. So the sound that's coming forth always comes from a place of listening. So that's how I always start. Um, and that said, you referred to that droning instrument I mentioned, which is the Shruti, S-H-R-U-T-I. It's in the harmonium family and it just drones. and. Um, in the recording that we listened to at the beginning of this, that's that um, kind of dominant. I feel like it's kind of dominant in that recording. And it's that, it's, so it's a drone. And for me, it feels grounding. Like it grounds, it feels like the foundation for the other sounds. And it feels it has a hum that resonates in me in a way that calms my nervous system to where I am in that place of listening to let the sounds come through. So I almost always start with that instrument. And what what wants to come through from there is always intuitive. (laughs) Right, it's in the moment, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's mm-hmm. what is, so how do you get, so I feel like what you're kind of saying is you, you, you start by listening. And so how do you tune yourself to listen? Well, you tune yourself to listen with the Shruti in your mm-hmm. case. I, so I do, I do have a silent meditation practice that is has also evolved and doesn't last as long as it used to i don't have as much of a like every day i sit silently for this amount of time which i used to which was kind of my pathway into meditation um but i do start especially when i'm sharing sound with other people i do ask um spirit to come through with what needs to be shared through me. Um, And whether that's the spoken words I offer to people to guide, I I usually start with like guiding people into a meditative place with spoken words and then go into the sound. So when I'm asking that, when I'm asking spirit to let the message move through, I'm asking, for that both with the spoken word and then when the sounds come through too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, we're, we're, we're going to wrap up, um, Stacy, but I do want to ask you one more question about sound. So I've mm-hmm. heard people say things about different megahertz, like 432 is the sound of love and, you mm-hmm. know, middle C is the sound of love. I mean, I've heard different numbers. Some people say, mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't remember them now. But 432 stands out. So are there Mm -hmm. certain vibrations or numbers, megahertz that that you are attracted to or that you feel like have a big impact on people? That's a really good question. Uh, And there are definitely um, different, different, schools of thought around that for sure um there there are people out there definitely like studying you know which frequencies um 
resonate with certain parts of the body or or might facilitate like an opening rather than a grounding and things like that um and i while i am aware of some of like what the frequencies are of the instruments that i use um when i was actually purchasing singing bowls for the most part you can choose between 440 which is what most of the instruments we're used to guitars violins most of the music we hear is in 440 um and then or 432 which is in some schools of thought believed to be um maybe like a more opening or ethereal connecting kind of frequency um and so that was a question that i definitely sat with when i was deciding which holes am i going to choose and i did choose standard tuning which is 440 because i want to be able to play them with my other instruments which are almost all 440 and i am i am drawn to what grounds me what grounds me in um with the elements of this earth my you know body just kind of i i am drawn to exploring um being here and not just like transcending being here i guess mm. so yeah <laughs> So is that why you you prefer the 440 tuning then? Does that I feel mean, more earthly? I don't. I won't. I do, I I chose it for myself. I don't know if I like prefer it over the other, but it is what I use. I got you. What I chose, and and I also totally see the value in 432 and other tunings. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Well, this is fascinating. And <laughs> if people want to get to know more about you and experience um, your vibrational healing or just to follow, find you on social media, just to get, you know, what you're doing with your singing now, how can they do that? Um, so I, my link tree is probably the best way, which I believe um you'll be able to share in the show oh, yes notes. absolutely okay and uh, i mean my website is one of the links on the link tree and my website is stacy pickering wellness.com great and that's stacy um, spelled s you want to spell stacy for us s-t-a-c-e-y p-i-c-k E R I N G wellness.com. Perfect. Perfect. Mm. Well, let's close out with a little bit of humming. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> oh. oh, do you want me to start? <laughs> do, would you like to? Do you, no. How do you feel oh, about you it? You're, or do you want me to? Oh, I thought you would. Okay, I can. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's just take one breath first. Into our bellies, putting our hands wherever it feels good on our body, breathing out through the mouth. And then we'll hum three times. So let's breathe in to hum. And breathe in to hum. And one last time, breathe in to hum.
Awesome. Thank you, Stacey Pickering, <laughs> sound healer, vibrational therapist. Until the next time. Thank you. Mm, thank you so much for having me and being here with me. <laughs> yes.